Hey everyone, welcome back to Blakesley Acres. I'm Joe. My name is Gage. And today we are going to be skinning out our lambs that we bottle raised this year. Um, it was time to get them done, so uh, I already dispatched them and bled them out. Pigs are freaking out over something. Um, but yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I skin them out and stuff here. The way I do it on the homestead, the butcher shop's not even close to being ready yet. Um, so I thought this would be a fun one to show you how I do it. You know, just for myself around the, the homestead. Do like a homestead version of uh, breaking down the um, the lambs. So it's going to be, um, we're skinning them today. Uh, I have a friend that's letting me use his walk-in cooler to hang them overnight. And then we'll be process them uh, tomorrow after church. So uh Stick with us and we'll get started here. Leg up. Tight, hold it tight. It's no different than when you help me with the deer. Skinning down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing that's pending is, what, is gonna hold it up in the air. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I skinned down the front right here. Uh, on these wool breeds, it just makes it easier staying out of the wool if you don't have uh, uh, shears. I come right down the front of the leg and cut across here and get this opened up. 
Now I have it raised to the height so I can work the back legs and uh, bung this sheep at the same time. I have a bucket of warm water that I keep right here to keep rinsing my hands and knives off. Uh, sheep are real dirty and I don't want the whole carcass covered in wool. So now that I got this scun down, I cut straight through where the bung is and I cut through the tail right at the base there. Right, you find a vertebrae, you can pop it right off as long as you keep down pressure. It's, it's pretty simple. Once you learn where it's at, you're like, same thing with the back legs. You find the joint and you uh, keep cutting around the joint and you can pop them. It works really well. <clears throat> so I'm gonna bring it up, make it easier to work down. This is just a, uh, um, uh, deer hunting hoist. Um, it's actually my boss's. I borrowed it and I haven't taken it back yet because I don't have any of my stuff set up. Um, but I need to take it back for it probably when I'm done with it here. Um, yeah, this is just a venison hoist. It works great for these lambs and goats and stuff. Now that I get it down past here, see how I, I was careful with the tip of my knife and I was pulling, trying to get this rose meat away from the hide. Um, it's not necessary that you keep it on there, but it, I like to, it just presents a little bit nicer. Um, it doesn't always work out in my favor, but I, if I can do it, I try to. Now I'm just gonna take my hand and I'm taking my fingers and I'm rolling down through behind the hide, trying to pull it away from the rest of this. Go out and go pee. I've been hiding from you. From me? 
I notice it helps if you get your hand a little wet to get behind this. But you're almost doing like a punching motion, I guess is what the bearded butchers would say. Some of that's uh, hanging up there, so I'll just take my knife and run it across there and kind of break that free until I can, feels like it's starting to loosen up. There, I got a hole there. Just like that. Now, rinse my hands back off again. I'm trying to keep the hide from rolling back on itself. It's doing it a little bit through me right here. More so the wool is than the hide. This hoist is kind of nice. It could be a pain in the butt, but it's also nice because it has this little lever on there. And when you, I'll show you here in a second, but when you pull the, um, the little lever right up there that the rope runs through, and uh, it, when you let the, it pinches the rope and holds this so you can tie it off. If you have one of these and you haven't used it yet, don't rely on that thing to hold these animals up because it slips. It it's, gives you enough so you can tie it off by yourself and not have to try to hold it with one hand and tie it with the other. Um, so now I brought it up. I'm going to take its front legs off and I'm going to get this kind of around the shoulders broke free. So same thing with the front legs. You find your joint right in there. Kind of far away on the camera, but right in there is the joint. And you just Should be able to. Get that tenon broke free in there. You should be able to just pop it like such. And run your knife up through there and cut it off. like such. That one I was actually a little low on. I was in the second part of the joint. Um, if you're in the right part of that joint up here, it's just like a straight shot right across. Not a big deal. Same thing happens. Like I said before, I'm going to invest in a pair of shears um, for the shop. Uh, we use them at uh, the butcher shop I worked at. And it just, especially, you know, in the wintertime, you get cows that are, they got, you know, poop balls on them and uh, whatnot, or dirt and just mud. You know what happens? They're out in the weather, especially pasture-raised cattle. You're going to get that. Um, but it dulls your knife super fast, so... Um, you shave them right before, right after you kill them, and it helps keep the carcass much cleaner. And uh, keeps your knife sharper. Um, or if you're doing this and you own your own sheep and you shear your own sheep, shear them before you kill them. Um, 
it's just a lot nicer. You're going to get a lot nicer product. You're not going to get the wool on there and um, manure and stuff that's on the wool. You know, you're not going to have to worry about it as much having that sh that shorter um, wool on there. Uh, you just be careful. Like I'm taking my time with this. I'm in no hurry right now. Not in a speed competition or anything. I just want to keep this carcass as clean as possible because it's going to save me work in the long run. Because when I go to hang this in the cooler, I'll go through and I'll actually trim all that, anything off these carcasses and rinse them down before I get them hung inside. Okay, as you can see, I started up here at the H bone. I cut down through. And I cut a seam. On bigger animals, you can actually stick your knife in and come down with it. Um, it's a little bit tighter inside these sh sheep and goats. I just tried it to see if I could show you guys, but it didn't work. So I take my hand, just like doing venison, and I stick it down in there, and I use my knife in between these two fingers, and I slowly go down. Um, you got to be very careful uh, not to poke the guts. All right, uh, we just finished up this lamb. We're gonna get him loaded in the back of the truck and get him hang on the cooler. But you can see how, um, get him up, get you guys up closer here. So he doesn't have a lot of fat on, or uh, a lot younger than I, you know, I'd like to, uh, but you can see how clean it is. Okay, everybody, uh, the lamb's cooled overnight. And um, we were at my friend of mine's butcher shop. It's just a small personal use shop. He put up, um, used his cooler. I'm just breaking them down here and sealing them up real quick. I don't have to break these down into um, individual lamb chops or anything. So it's going to be pretty simple. Um, <sighs> So usually where I start, it's been been a while since I've butchered a lamb. Um, but I come right in front of the hip bone right here, and I'll pull the um, flaps back and cut those back. Um, I'm just cutting through the tendons and uh, meat, buddy. Right? 
So I just took my knife and I cut all the way around right in front of the hip bone. That leaves the sirloin, the leg of lamb, and the rear shanks. And I just take my uh, hand saw and cut through the spinal column. Bring you guys in so you can see this before I cut that off. So I just pulled the this flat meat comes up there, cut right around to there, then around to there, and I make a knife cut all the way around to get to the bone. There's some glands right in here I'm going to take out. So now I'm going to pop over here to his saw. And I'm going to split right, oh, right down the spinal column here. And I'm going to take the shanks off and he wants all that hole. I just took the knuckles off. Can't chew on those anyway. So I'm going to come back here and I reach up inside. I try to get behind that shoulder blade right there and just feel and see where I'm at. Use my hand side to cut through the brisket bone. So now I got the center, so you got the brisket plate and stuff right here. That'll be like the brisket on a beef. Um, I break this down on the saw also, and I will with the, the loin and center section of this lamb. And I'm popping all the butter bubbles here.
just come back through. I'm going to clean these up a little bit right before I package them. And uh, that's it. I mean, pretty simple. You cut individual lamb chops out of that, you know. And if I was doing this by hand, um, I'd just go in between the vertebrae right here, in between the ribs, cut with my hand saw, and then cut the rest with the knife. Um, you can do rack alone. So now that's left. Um, I'm going to take this front third of the lamb, I'm going to cut right through there with my saw, um, take the neck off, clean that up, and I flip it this way. And I'll cut the rest way through the spinal column and through the uh, brisket plate. And then I just turn and I cut uh, the front shank off. And it takes the bottom of the brisket um, plate off. And that's it. Then we'll be done. So what we got left is we got the whole shoulder that's going to stay whole. I cut the, the shank and the brisket plate off here and that's where the rib section came off and the neck at an angle this way. Um, same thing with this side. Now I'm just going to go through and clean this stuff up and just package. <clears throat> it's super simple. I've got, oh, this video so far I'm 12 minutes in and breaking that whole lamb down. I mean it helps with the saw. But half hour you can break a whole lamb down into good sized chunks like this with a hand saw or um, even a saw saw with a <clears throat> clean blade on it. Um, it's very simple, very easy. <clears throat> I recommend people, if you raise lambs, try it. I mean, if, if you want to. Uh, but you could do a lot more with this. You can break this down into individual smaller roasts. Um, I just don't see the point. I mean, for me, if I'm going to cook it, what I would do is leave these pieces whole. Um, so yeah, I just want to do a, like a real quick um, lamb processing video and show you guys how easy it is. Um, there's tons of information on the egg, actual breakdown on these. Uh, I know Backwoods Butcher, he's got a pretty nice um, goat processing video similar um, on doing lambs. I haven't done a a ton of lambs um, but when we open up the shop we're going to be offering services um, so hopefully I get to play around with more uh, different lamb cuts and stuff as people bring them in um, but there I think I had um, oh I don't know maybe an hour and a half into killing them and skinning and gutting yesterday and I've just put a half hour into this right now. I'll probably have another half hour into packaging and cleanup and we'll be done. Um, very simple process. And that's how I do it um, on a homestead level. Even if you guys picked up a cheap uh, bandsaw, this one's a larger one. But I have a small one um, that I've used for personal use. You can pick them up three, four hundred bucks used. Um, maybe a little bit more if they're a little bit nicer. But you don't need anything fancy for doing lambs, deer, even pork. I've cut beef on that small one. Um, it's not something I would do on a daily basis, but it, it's worked for me and in my personal use as I've done it. All right, everybody. <clears throat> We're back on the farm again. 
Um, I just want to wrap up this uh, lamb processing video. Um, once I start doing it in the shop, I want to get more detailed, in-depth videos. Um, I was just trying to get it done and get out of there because I have fence to move and everything. But uh, yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, comments would be greatly appreciated. Um, you guys could like, subscribe, share, and ring the notifications bell. Um, still trying to build. It's still going kind of slow. Um, so yeah, uh, any, any shares and likes and comments and stuff definitely helps the channel, uh, get it out there on the algorithm. Um, like always, appreciate you guys. Hope to catch you on the next one.